Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. For today's video, we're going to be talking about Ian Malcolm and why the character changed so drastically from the original Jurassic Park to what we got to see in The Lost World. So Jeff Goldblum's portrayal of Ian Malcolm in the original Jurassic Park is among the most iconic supporting characters in all of science fiction in my opinion. The way he reacts to his peers during their stay on Isla Nublar, and even the way he just sits there laughing the first time he sets his eyes on a dinosaur, have become really popular moments for people to latch onto in my opinion. As soon as anybody from Engine opened their mouth about how there were absolutely no faults in their systems, and how everything was going perfectly on the island, Malcolm would always respond with a clever counter-argument to these statements, and most of the time, they were really, really interesting. But for some odd reason, after putting this character's center stage and making him the main protagonist of The Lost World, some audiences found that the character was far less compelling than he was in the original movie. Most of these criticisms cite a drastic change in personality and character for Jeff Goldblum's role that they personally didn't really like or even really understand. Others didn't really mind that Ian Malcolm was tonally different in The Lost World, and they actually preferred his character in the second film compared to the first. I myself happen to be one of these people. But the question still remains for those that have had a problem with the change. Why is Ian Malcolm so different in The Lost World? Well, the answer to that question isn't really all that complicated to explain. Although I will say that there is definitely a step that many people seem to be skipping when going through this evolution in their heads. If we go back to the character's role in the original Jurassic Park, we can see that Malcolm is introduced to us as a pretty polarizing individual from the start. He wastes no time in telling Dr. Sattler that she's attractive, laughs in a pretty weird and kind of flamboyant manner when talking about dinosaurs, and makes everyone feel awkward in the span of about 30 seconds. Malcolm just kind of tells it like it is. He doesn't beat around the bush and says what he thinks without anything holding him back. But while he's doing all of this stuff, he's also still laughing and smiling at everything and everyone around him. In Jurassic Park, he's laid back, cool, and relaxed most of the time. However, in The Lost World, he has a very different personality. This is the film where Malcolm spends pretty much the whole duration being pretty anxious and tired on Isla Sorna. That's really logical for a character that's been to a similar dinosaur-infested location before and barely gotten away with his life, might I add. However, many people still believed that this was just way too serious of a character change for what they'd come to know of Dr. Malcolm in the first film. No matter how they looked at the movie, it just didn't sit right with them. To make matters even more interesting, Ian Malcolm doesn't really arc as a character in either of these movies. Instead, he's pretty static in both scenarios. Although The Lost World originally intended him to have learned a parental lesson from the dinosaurs as far as looking out for his daughter goes, this all got left on the cutting room floor. And in its place, we kind of just have anxious Malcolm acting much more serious than what he did in the previous entry. Now, I could go into detail about how Peter Ludlow destroyed his reputation in the second movie, and how his credibility as a scientist was devastated by what Engine had done to him earlier on in that film, but I don't really think that you need to explain all of that when talking about Ian's change between movies. And that's because if we're looking at these films truthfully, you can actually see this character change happen before The Lost World was ever released. Because he actually acts like this for the entire second half of Jurassic Park. Once Malcolm is found terribly wounded near Gennaro's remains in the original movie, Ian's happy-go-lucky persona is quickly replaced by a much more worrisome and honestly anxiety-ridden character. All he's really missing from his Lost World appearance here would be the action star beard stubble that he had in the second movie. If you look at every scene that features Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park after he gets injured by the T-Rex, he is acting drastically different to the way he did in the first half. This is where the change in character really comes from, in my opinion. Once he was attacked by a dinosaur himself, you can see that serious shift in character. That's where he becomes Lost World Malcolm. Still, the opinion that Malcolm should have been more like he was at the beginning of Jurassic Park in The Lost World 
is something that I will say that I sympathize with somewhat. I think being the sequel to what was at the time the biggest movie ever made put a lot of pressure on the second film and it unfortunately only met half of audiences expectations. Jurassic Park is a very different film in tone to The Lost World as well. The first movie is way more jovial about dinosaurs and dinosaur interactions with people than what the second film really had to offer. Which is why I think Jurassic World felt more like a proper follow-up for some than what Lost World initially did. Expectations can really play into people's perceptions of things a lot when they first experience a new canon entry in their favorite series. And maybe them expecting happy, laughing, flirtatious Malcolm tempered their views on the more worrisome guy that we got in Lost World. Either way, I still think Goldblum's performance in Part 2 makes a lot of sense given it was pretty much consistent with the character in the second half of the first movie. Now as always, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my awesome game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Their continued support has really been a lot of help to me when making this stuff, and I never want them to ever forget it. So a big thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. I'll see you all in the next one guys, and as always, take it easy.